How's it going everybody? I wanted to shoot a video that is going to try to kick off the beginning of the series for the VMware rollout that I'm working on. This is building up my home lab, making it more of a physical lab than a virtual lab. So let me tell you about all the craziness I've had to deal with over the past eh, week and a half, two weeks. So about two weeks ago, might be even a little longer by now. I honestly lost track of time. Um, the last time I posted, as a matter of fact, I will go find out when it was. Because I'm actually legitimately, uh, let's see here. I posted that on the 18th of January that I bought a couple of new servers for uh, testing out a VMware lab, an all physical VMware lab. Now it's the 31st. So that makes that, I posted that on the 18th. So that was on a Monday when I bought the servers. And so a week, almost two weeks that it's been since this has all come out to be. So um, obviously it takes a few days for the servers to show up. They eventually showed up. Let me go ahead and adjust my mic real quick so it's a little easier for, hopefully it'll pick up the audio a little cleaner. Uh, the servers eventually showed up. Um, I went ahead and I bought uh, three PNY 240 gig SSDs, and I bought three new caddies for the SSDs because the uh, UCSC 220 M3s only have two and a half inch wide hard drive base. Whether you use a hard drive, a spinning mechanical disk, or if you use an SSD, it's two and a half inches wide. So I bought the caddies to meet uh, to do that. I think the hard drives were like 30 bucks a piece, and then you have the the caddy which was like 15. So that's 45 plus another 90. So it was about 130 bucks for the the caddy and the hard drive. So not too bad. So I'm waiting for the stuff to come in the mail. And eventually the servers show up. And they come in two boxes. I'm like, oh okay, no worries. And so they, they show up and I'm like, okay, now begins the long, grueling process of getting them squared away. So then it was, I couldn't do anything that day because of other other stuff that was going on. So basically the servers got moved to the basement and sat in the basement for a couple of days before I had an opportunity to get to them. So I finally am able to get to the servers. So physically go downstairs and physically get them wired in and stuff like that. I know I'm going to have to upgrade some things, like I want to upgrade the, the Cisco integrated memory or management controller, the SIMSI, as we'll refer to it as we go forward. I know I'm going to have to work on getting the a number of other things working and stuff like that. So that was the first step. So I went through that process and I got the servers physically, you know, put into my rack, which I'll be showing you pictures and stuff like that. All right, so we have the rack here. This is the very top of the rack. The rack hasn't changed a whole lot since the last time I did a video on this, but if I bring you guys down vertically to the bottom, we have all the servers. So if you look at the very bottom, the very bottom here, we have this server right here is the IBM server. This is the one that will be pretty much be getting decommissioned. I'm gonna leave it on temporarily but eventually it will get phased out. It'll simply be used to host a couple of virtual machines to do things like testing for the identity management exam for CCP security, the ICE exam. That's pretty much it, because it's got a lot of nicks in the back of it. The two servers above it, this one and this one, these servers are both Cisco UCSC 220s. As you can see now, I have a total of five of them. So. The top three are the new ones that we're going to be integrating with the existing environment. And in the first bay, that right there, that right there, and that right there, I've inserted a 240 gig SSD. The caddy goes in like this. You open it up. You pull the, the, the hard drive tray out like so. And I, I have a PNY 240 gig SSD physically ready to go for it. That'll get back inserted back in there like so. And we're in pretty good shape. The that's pretty much the the main thing. Now on the back side of the rack, 
there's a, there's a lot going on here. If I tilt it down a little bit, we have the IBM server down here at the very bottom, the five C220s. So these three right here will be for the VMware hardware lab, which is what I'm going to be, which is the reason why I made the nine cables. So if you look in the back here on the network side of the house, you can see by bringing it in a little bit closer and zoom in, you can see that there are three network ports. So we have two data, one and two, and then we have a management interface right here. So I will manage the device through this, and I'll take this port and this port. They will be physically wired. Let me zoom back out. They will be physically wired, see right here, to this switch right here. So I'm probably going to have to add another switch into the environment because of the, the just not having enough space. But I'm probably going to have to run two cables down. I'll take probably these two ports right here, which are right there, and then I'll run cables down to a, a gigabit switch that I have actually sitting right here. So that's basically how that will work. So that'll be the environment. I'll go ahead and show you how that gets set up and get all the cabling done here in just a moment. So the servers finally got put into the rack and I started trying to figure out the cabling and all that type of stuff. So I, I'm going down that route. So I've got that process started. I've got, the, I've got a Cisco 3750G switch that's got all gigabit ports on it. And I go through and I even recorded a video on how to set up the existing switch to the, to the 3750 switch that will be used for the ESXi hosts and things like that. And I set up a dual cable port channel from my core switch down to this switch so that I would have more flexibility in terms of doing things like that. So I got that, uh, I got it all physically laid out and I started getting the cables into play. I recorded a video on how to actually make the cables and, you know, physically ran all the cables. I'll, I'll include all of that video in this one and probably some subsequent videos as well because it's going to be a multi-part series. So I'm going through all these steps and it's going out pretty well. And I get everything physically cabled. I get things powered on. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is I am going to take these nine cables right here, which bring them down here. I got my nine cables and I'm going to selectively wire them in. So does it matter really where you put them? Technically, no but I'm going to put them in in an order that I know that will be make sense on the back side. So what I'm gonna do is you have the odd numbered ports up here and you have the even numbered ports down here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these nine cables and the order in which you put them in, it really doesn't make much of a difference, but I'm gonna take these two right here. It doesn't really matter which ones are grabbed and I'm going to plug this one into here that connects there then this will connect to here then this one will connect to here and then my goal, the goal with doing it like this is that the top six these guys right here will be for the data side of the house and then I'll be able to run them backwards over the top of the switch which is right here I'll bring this up just a little bit for you and I'll drape these up and over the top of the switch like this kind of like a slicked back hairdo and I will connect them in like so and to the back of the servers and grab this guy and the bottom half these three ports right here will be used for the management side so I'm going to clean that up a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll just pull these guys through down here at the bottom. Go ahead and back this up a little bit for you. So that one's good. This one's good. And this one. And then this one. And this one. And then this one. All right, so now that they're all separated, I have these three left. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these six, 
and I'm going to stretch them out so that they are all like this so they're all stretched out and then I'll take them and oops, I, well, one came out which was, wasn't, wasn't supposed to happen <laughs> and I will plug him in like so that sometimes does happen so now I'll take this the six cables and then I will pass them through to the back side of the, the server like so and the goal with this is whoops that popped out again I'm gonna have to be careful of that is to get them to lay a certain way and then what I'll do is this cable and this cable will be this physical server right here the bottom one then the, these two cables will be this server and then these three cables will be this server so that I'll know which one's going to which and then the same thing with this one. this one here to here this one here to here this one here to here so that I know where when I connect to a certain port I know which one's connecting to which so let's go ahead and take care of that real quick as well I'll take these three cables and plug them in here now this switch is not turned on currently not that big of a deal and last but certainly not least this guy awesome okay they'll get swept back as well but I'll do that later so that I know which ones are doing which alright so let's go to the back side of the server Okay, so now that we're on the back side of the server, I'm going to have to make sure that I pull the right cables through so that I have the connections going to where they need to be. And remember that I have these guys right here. The way that this works is you have this port right here is management, and then this port and this port are data. So just remember that you keep those in the correct order. So what I'll do is I will check the connections. But I have plenty of cable length. I can absolutely 100% reach back there and connect. Let me zoom back out a little bit so it's easier for you guys to see. And I will go ahead and start running those cables. And that wraps up all of the cabling. Now, I've uh, got that all squared away. Last but certainly not least, let's go ahead and just zoom in real quick on what we did. We have the bottom servers all wired in with its cables, the middle servers all wired in with its cables, and then the top servers all wired in with its cables. And I know which one's going to which, and that's really, really important when you're doing a cabling design. So I'll go ahead and zoom back out. Alright, so I have a couple of crossover cables that I have from a long time ago that are going to probably be just long enough to connect these guys together which is exactly what I'm going to need so I've got these two open ports right here Let's see if I can zoom in real quick on that just so you guys can see what it is that I'm doing go ahead and pan up just a little bit and then zoom in on the switch port there we go so I'm going to connect these guys right here on this port here and this port here And let me just make sure that this guy goes underneath this other black port, or this black cable here. Oops. Hopefully that wasn't important. <laughs> Alright, so I've got these cables here. I'm going to bring them down to the bottom switch. Let me go ahead and scoot that down just a little bit so you guys can see it. Like that. So I'm going to bring these guys down here and whatever I had on top, this guy right here is on top so he'll go to the top port here. And then this guy right here will come down to here and like so. Alright, so that's pretty much it. So beyond that, that's the cabling so that's going to integrate this new switch with my old environment. 
Alright, so from the back of the server, we have our three physical servers. As you can see, we have a mixture of power supplies. We've got 650 watt. Let me go ahead and zoom in on that actually so you guys can see everything. So we have 650 watt. We have, which is going to be this particular model. We have two, uh, two 450 watt and then two 650 watt. So in this scenario, does it matter which one we plug into? It really doesn't. But I'm going to end up plugging into just a single power supply. I don't need them all turned on at the same time. So I have power cords. This is going to be your normal power cord that your computer would use. And so it's got the, the traditional three prongs, three connections right here, as you can see. Actually, I mean, so you can see that. And then it's got the normal three prong like you would normally use. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is take the twist tie off these guys and then we're going to go ahead and get them physically wired in. Now on the back of the server wall, if I was to bring this, oops, if I was to bring this up and show you this, I've actually got a an area of power, surge protectors that I've got mounted to the wall. So I only need to use three of those and they connect into a dedicated connection at the top up there so they're all wired into that junction box they come down to that power strip and they go into the servers so that's basically where that's at so I'm gonna go ahead and take advantage of that and then run your power cable down and find a power supply to plug into I'm just gonna choose the first one here, I don't think it makes a difference which one you use, and then just physically wire into it. Like so. Okay, now they're all blinking. Let me go ahead and tr show you that one more time. Alright, so this one's blinking right there. This one's blinking right there. And then this one's blinking right here, which is what you want to see. If they're blinking, that means that they are detecting AC power, which is what you want. So we're in good shape there. Now the next step would be to boot them up. So this would be the point in time when you would go through and make sure that you can boot them up. So I'll, I'm going to stop this video and uh, this is this clip, I should say, and then I will uh, show you how to boot them up and all that good stuff. Okay, and now on the front side of the server, we can see that we have some status lights. So let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit so you guys can see this a little bit better. And move this a little bit so you guys can see all the details. So what this basically means, if I was to move some of these cables off to the side here real quick, is these status lights you have from left to right. This first one right here is an indicator of power. Then this next one over here is an indicator of the fans. This is temperature. I'm not exactly sure what that one is, and this one is a function of network. There's currently, there are network cables plugged in, but the server is not powered on. And in addition to that, this switch that the servers are physically wired to, this switch isn't turned on yet. So we have to power that switch on first, which will be the next thing to do, go do, would be to power it on and then get it connected. But at this point in time, we're in a really good spot to begin the boot up process of the switch and all that type of stuff. So you might ask, the question might be, do I power the servers on first? Do I power the switch on first? Uh, how would I go about doing that? And the answer to that question is, it really depends on where you want to go first. Do you want to configure the networking piece? Do you want to power the switch on? That's up to you. I am a network guy, so configuring the switch would take me all of a few minutes. And just for the, the, those folks out there that are curious to know what I would do configuration-wise for the switch, this connection right here to the upstream switch, the this will be a port channel that's right here. This will be connected to this switch up here. Let me go ahead and just pan up a little bit to that switch up there, and I'll that those connections right there is where that'll go into play. And what will end up happening is this will be a port channel, and then these ports right here, go ahead and zoom in for you, 
these ports right here on the switch will be all of these guys. So th this set of ports, this set of ports, and this set of ports will be in port channels as well, going down to each one of the servers. So we have this server, this server, and this server will all have port channels set up to this guy. And there will be, it won't be configuration on the ESXi side that will be doing that. It will be configuration on the switch side. There will be a port channel configured. Out of the gate, it will just be of mode on. And I'll show you what that configuration will look like once we get upstairs. So right now I'm in the basement. I had to go. I'm not going to worry about the switch config right now. I'm going to worry about getting the servers booted up. And I'll have to have stuff to make sure that that all works. Now, the next piece that we have to be worried about is when we're connecting into each one of the servers. There is a USB port on the back of the servers that allows us to plug in the USB drive that we created for ESXi 6.7 update 1 and another USB port that is used for the keyboard that we're going to use to interact with the server. We're going to need to plug both of those in. Once we do that, then there's a VGA cable, a VGA port on the back of the server. We're going to run that VGA cable to a monitor that I have sitting on top of the rack that I'm going to be using to interact with the server with. So let's go ahead and take a look at those details. Alright, so I'm on the back of the server rack now and what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to run a power cord that I've got sitting right here and I'm going to do physically plug it into the back of the switch so I can get the switch booted up. So I'm going to run that like this underneath some of those other power cords and those network cables and I'm going to physically plug this power the switch on. So now that's powered on and then I have a console cable hanging out over here. Let me work my way over to that guy and this is physically cable plugged into a switch a PC and what I'm going to be able to do is I'll be able to connect into that PC and then I'll be able to plug into the back of the, the console cable right there. So now the console cable is connected and I will be able to configure the switch from that which will configure the port channel. I'll be able to connect into the switch that's up here. Alright so now that I've got that all done the next thing for me to go do is focus on the the USB portion of things. So I have USB ports right here right here, right here, right here, right here, and right here. And as you can see I've got this one that's right plugged into this guy right here. I got this guy right here. This is connecting to a USB keyboard. So I'm actually going to follow it and I can unplug this guy and then I can plug him into any one of those other ports for the USB keyboard. So I'll do that to this guy right here. Plug it in like so. There we go. Alright, now that I've got that done, the next thing I can do is I can grab the USB drive itself that I'm going to use to boot the server with. So I'm going to focus on this bottom one. In addition to that, I see this VGA cable that's hanging out right here. Actually, let me zoom out a little bit so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So I have this VGA cable that's right here. It's plugged in. This is actually running to the monitor that's sitting on top of my rack. So I'm going to move him from this guy up one to the next server in line. And now he's plugged in, but the display is not going to show anything. So I'm going to take the USB drive and plug it into the other port. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and plug him in right here. Just like that. Okay, so he's this USB drive is got the is configured to do a boot up of ESXi 6.7. Before we can do that, we need to configure the server, the SIMC, and all that type of stuff. As you can see, some of the network cables are starting to light up and things like that. I'm going to leave. Uh, I'm going to go to the front side of the server now and show you what it looks like when the network adapters are up and running, and then I'm going to go ahead and power on the bottom server first and we're going to see how all that comes together. I run into all kinds of other problems that I will talk about here and uh, we'll do this as 
um, I'll put this as part one because I'm already 20 minutes in. There's going to be some other things that I'm going to have to talk about when it comes to getting the servers all squared away. So this will be part one that I will release. Part two, I'll, I'll talk about some of the other issues that I ran into and how I was able to resolve them, plus the other issues that I ran into with the servers and all that good stuff and some of the issues that I'm still dealing with. And So, yeah, hopefully this was interesting to you. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching me. Until next time, guys, take it easy.